Welcome back everyone, Rob Joswiak. This is a continuation of our uh, interview series on my YouTube channel. With me today, I have Mr. Mark Chapman and Michael Jackson. And we're going to be talking about uh, the LGBTQ plus I community within the Foreign Service. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, worth mentioning that uh, my neighbors are departing soon, so we wanted to also show that a part of the Foreign Service life is that you pack out and are without your stuff yeah. for a while. The reality is you don't get to uh, stay with your stuff all that time. Transportation and transport don't always coincide, so often you live without your goods for some time. So if you hear a little echo, uh, you know why now. Uh, gentlemen, Glypha is a part of uh, an um, organization within the Department of State. Can you tell the viewers what it's about and how they might be able to join? Um, started at State uh, over 30 years ago. They just had their 30th anniversary. USA, uh, State Department, Department of Defense, Department of Agriculture, any federal agency can really sign on. Um, uh, sign on by going to glifa.org, um, G-L-I-F-A-A.org. Um, but uh, they work to promote diversity in the State Department and in the government. Uh, and they've worked for years for, uh, for LGBT rights. Uh, and one of the biggest things they do is they work for accreditation with, with other nations around the world. So that me as an EFM can go to the different posts and be recognized and not be a uh, considered member of household. Right. Um, very important. There are right. still uh, over 70 countries in the world that don't accredit. So that kind of shortens the list that we get to, uh, to bid on in the bidding process. Yeah, and so can you talk about that, um, Mike, that like in the Foreign Service when you're bidding, you know, there are considerations. Sure, so um, as one of the promises that I made to Mark, um, I came into the Foreign Service in 2015, so a little bit, this is a second career for me. Um, one of the promises I made to Mark is that if he's willing to follow me around the world like this, then I will never purposely put us into a place where he feels in danger or not valued as a spouse of a diplomat, just like every other spouse of a diplomat is, is valued around the world. So in the department, we do have a, a couple of resources. We have access to um, some sensitive information about which countries accredit same-sex spouses. Um, also one of the issues is for opposite sex couples who have LGBTIQ children, that is also an issue in some countries because there are still countries who won't recognize, say, a transgendered child to, to, um, who self-identifies with uh, the gender not of their birth, um, regardless of what the parental status is. And so Glypha also works to help in that venue as well. But one of the, one of the areas when we're bidding um, and it was one of the reasons why I chose Phnom Penh and one of the reasons why we chose our next post is the accreditation of the host country to allow Mark to get the full um, benefits of a spouse of a diplomat, which means that he has diplomatic immunity in the country and that he has certain rights and privileges and carries a diplomatic passport as well. Excellent. Uh, that's the external component dealing with whatever nation you may or may not go to. Can you talk a little bit about internally, what it's like working in the State Department, even if there is any difference or whatever. But this channel is really to let people know what it's like being a Foreign Service officer. As I say in all the videos, I'm trying to get folks from different walks of life, different backgrounds, and uh, I've really been wanting to do uh, this interview with you guys, so thanks for squeezing it in before you leave. Sure. So um, I'll speak from the Foreign Service officer side, and I'll let Mark speak from the family member side. Um, but for me, coming into the department in 2015, um, I came after some real significant change had already happened. So probably the most significant um, happened during when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State um, back in 2009-2010 when they added same-sex domestic partners to receive all of the same benefits that um, married spouses would receive. That was significant. Um, that had been in place for a while before um, I joined the State Department, of course, in June of 2015, um, Obergefell's um, was decided, which uh, made same-sex marriage um, the law of the land across the country, so that translated into the State Department as well. So I know that there are 
other LGBTIQ officers who have a longer history in the department that I do, who probably have seen quite a sea change happen, um, you know, from when we had the uh, the big rush to join the Foreign Service under the uh, Bush Jr. administration with Colin Powell through Obama with Clinton and Secretary Kerry. Um, my experience so far has been quite positive. Um, I have not seen any overt um, harassment or discrimination. I feel like I, you know, my opinions have been valued, that I as a, you know, a contributing member of each post have been quite valued. And our previous post to Phnom Penh was um, Bamako, Mali in West Africa. And I will say that there, as well as here, the reception by the local staff and by the host country has actually been quite positive. Um, you know, each country has its own issues that they're working out, um, but definitely within the embassy community, the, the local staff as well as the Americans um, have all been very welcoming and uh, I myself have not seen any uh, any sort of overt, you know, discrimination. Yeah. I, I really haven't. As an EFM, I haven't seen really any discrimination, any, um, you know, they're, they're always quite inquisitive, mm -hmm. um, especially here in Phnom Penh. They, they wanted to know about the gay and lesbian yeah. lifestyle. Right. Um, we recently did a panel yeah. at the Ancan Exchange for Youth in the Country. I'm a public diplomacy officer, and as a part of my work, uh, we had several members of the community from the mission here in Cambodia go, and we had a, a rather robust audience. And so it is something we do on the PD side, not just the internal HR or the organizations. Um, we're all about the rights of human rights. And so, uh, you know, something we're promoting. Yeah. Um, as an EFM, I can say that I have always been treated just as an EFM. Um, <laughs> not any different than in the Which other is a whole other uh, talk. Uh, yeah, a whole other talk. <laughs> um, um, in separate cities. Uh, but I've had the same access to employment that other EFMs have. Um, both the two posts that I've been to, uh, I've been able to find employment. Uh, and even in our next one, I already have employment secured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to, to wrap things up, someone sitting at home watching this, think about joining the Foreign Service. They're some part of the community, ally, otherwise, whatever. What do you say to them? Uh, join Galifa. Um, do that. It's a great port, uh, part, to, place to do your resort or service. Research, excuse me. Yeah. Um, because they will have the most up to date information on what posts accredit uh, and what the challenges really are. Uh, they also work with, you know, making, ensuring that LGBT, LGBT people have uh, access to health care mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they work closely with MED, um, you know, and uh, volunteer um, before you're voluntold, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would say. One of my only regrets in life was that I didn't learn about the Foreign Service earlier in my career. So had I known that this was an option, I would have gone for it uh, sooner than I did because it's, it's a hard lifestyle, but it's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And it is welcoming to LGBTI persons. And this is actually, the department is a great place to work. Um, and we do feel supported. We feel heard, especially with Glyfa. Um, Mark did not mention that he has been our post Glyfa representative as well, and that may continue into our next post as well. So he works very closely with them. So okay, kudos to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely, if you're considering a life in the Foreign Service, uh, do your research. The lifestyle is not for everyone, but if you're a hard worker and you have a sense of adventure and you want to see the world, yeah. Um, don't let being uh, different from anybody else uh, sway you from that because especially under this administration uh, diversity, inclusion, equity and accessibility is at the forefront of all of our hiring and recruitment practices mm -hmm. right now. Thank you guys very much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Uh, as always, I'll have links down below to everything we talked about. I'm interviewing a variety of people from the embassy and within the Foreign Service so you get a real good depth and background. And yeah, you know, it's it's not for everybody, for those who are in it, doing it. We love it. And, you know, we're doing stuff regularly that if I weren't a Foreign Service officer, I wouldn't be doing otherwise. Absolutely. Like this <laughs> cool. Thanks for watching Thanks the channel. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much.